Well, I know some of us are a little more detail oriented than others. And then sometimes you want to sit down and find the details about something. This is Bowtie Dave, a little bit OCD, a little bit ADHD, a lot ADHD, a lot OCD, I'll admit. Here on a windy cold morning at the Destin Church of Christ, looking at two compost piles that we're flipping, trying to do an 18 day compost. This front pile has been a lot more successful than this back pile because I'm pretty sure we did a lot better integrating stuff into this back pile. Uh, they are both uh, 15 to 18 days old, 15 to 18 days old, and they've both just been flipped a sixth time. So for the official experiment, they will get one more flip, and then we're gonna do a video on the analysis of the content, comparing it with the original stuff in the horse bedding compost that we built it with. But uh, I wanted to sit down Few minutes and show you the geometric shapes here because we are having a debate with one of the fellows that's helping us out here about what geometric shape is the best for your compost pile and that little volcano thing that we do you've seen us poking down and spreading it out you'll notice how nice and rounded these edges are and that little volcano shape that we're building by pushing the fork down in the middle and pulling it out actually creates this really cool almost spherical shape and that's the shape we're looking for. Now, if it were a perfect cone with a top cut off, that's a conical frustum. And we're gonna compare some of the measurements of those shapes to see which is, and to prove, <laughs> which is more efficient for composting. So excuse me as I shift into classroom mode here, but uh, Let's look at these geometric shapes. First of all, let's discuss what a yard of soil is. Here in the United States, we measure soil in yards. And what you see here is a box that is three foot on each side for a total of 27 cubic feet. That's a yard by a yard by a yard. And this is what we call a yard. Now I know Outside of the United States, soil and stuff gets measured. Cement, other things that need volume measured, gets measured in metric with meters and so forth. But uh, I'm just going to pick yards for right now and square feet and cubic feet. But the principles are exactly the same. We're talking about geometry here, not uh, the, a debate between uh, feet and meters or yards and meters. So anyway, you can see here this shape, this cube, is three feet by three feet by three feet. It's a total of 27 cubic feet, and the surface area is 54 square feet. Now, surface area is very important because that's where you're losing heat, moisture, and everything else from these compost bins. Now, if we take that shape and stretch it out, in fact, you can see here a rectangular prism, a box. This one is two feet by two feet by 6.75 feet. So it's kind of a long uh, box with a two feet high and two feet deep and six and a half feet long. But notice the surface area and, and also the volume, still 27 cubic feet, same exact volume. But notice the surface area went up to 62 square feet. So from 54 to 62 square feet by stretching this box out. So the more we stretch these very basic shapes, the cube, uh, the worse the surface area is. So if we could set that cube on the ground, it would be, have nine square feet less because the bottom is no longer exposed. So it would come down to 45 square feet of surface area. So 45 is the magic number when we're talking about sitting it on the ground. But we're gonna just go with the surface area of 54 square feet right now. 54 square feet. Now, let's compare this to a sphere, a ball. Here we are with a sphere, a ball. Notice at the bottom down there, the volume is 27 cubic feet. It's the exact same size, okay? As far as the volume is concerned, the same amount. But now we've arranged it in a sphere. And you can see the radius there is uh, 1.86 feet, that's from the center to the outside. But notice the difference in the surface area. 
the surface area goes drops from 54 down to 43.5%. That's roughly 20% decrease in surface area. That's 20% less surface area for moisture to evaporate, for heat to escape, for whatever else uh, we don't want to lose in this compost pile, in this compost shape, let's say. Um, so the whole point here is, though, that as we go from uh, these various shapes, and let's just look at the distance traveled between two zones, and, and I'm going to tie this back around. But you see, here's two points on the on the screen, and we know that the shortest distance, or the least surface area, between these two points is a straight line. Now, if we take a detour and go this way, we know we've added so much to the trip. Now, let's say we don't quite take that short of a turn, and you know, we, we come down to just a, a trip like this, and we still have added distance to our trip. Well, what happens if we actually are able to make a curve out of it, like an airplane flight? Well, that actually reduces the distance traveled. Now, why is this important? Is because this distance traveled is surface area of these geometric shapes. So, when we talk about these these various paths, we start to see that the sharper, the more corners that we add, the longer the trip. If we can go at a and a straight line, or in this case, a slight curve between two points, we have less distance or less surface area between those various shapes. So we come down to comparing our cube to a sphere. So we now see that a sphere is it has less surface area than anything with sharp edges on it, sharp corners. And so, here in this third column now, you can see that we have a pile that's arranged in a perfect sphere. Now, this is not reality, this is the ideal. But you can see here, look, the volume there, 27 cubic feet, the exact same volume underneath that pile, that, that hemisphere. The diameter is a little over four and a half feet. The height, the radius of it is 2.345 feet. So the important thing to look at here is down at the bottom, the surface areas. Now we have two surface areas here. We have the base and we have the cap. Now the base, that 17.27 square feet, is what's sitting on the ground. So we're not losing evaporation or heat on that bottom side of the pile. The cap is where we would be losing evaporation and heat. So the cap, 34 and a half square feet. Now notice, same volume, same 27 cubic feet, but look over here on the sphere, which we're not gonna main, we can't have in Earth's gravity, but look over here on the sphere, the surface area is 43 and a half feet. We're suddenly dropping down to 34 and a half, from 43 and a half to 34 and a half square feet. We've suddenly got a much more efficient pile. And so what we see here is the more closely you can resemble that pile that's shaped like a hemisphere, the better the pile. Now, there are two exceptions. Uh, the big manufacturers of compost use long rows, and that comes into a completely different shape. They cannot make piles with 500 uh, cubic feet in the shape of a hemisphere just because of, number one, it's very difficult to pile things that high. Number two, it'll burst into flames. The other thing to, to note here, though, <laughs> and before someone fusses at me, says, well, no, I use uh, pallets to make my compost in a cube, and it works perfectly. Well, here, take a look at this. You'll notice I've taken out some of the surface areas. That's where the pallet sits. When that pallet is holding your pile in place, you suddenly have a lot less surface area, and, and it actually becomes, and I do this myself, I have a nice um, three-bin pallet compost system out there. You've all seen it if you watch my um, garden tours. But uh, yeah, that's a different situation. We're, we're just talking about the most efficient pile sitting out on the ground with nothing next to it. No wall next to it, no nothing. And really, it comes down to that curved shape, that, uh, that spherical shape that we are looking for in our compost piles. And that is what that funky volcano thing does. It's the wildest thing I've ever seen. When you do that little 
fork in the middle and spread out the pile, it creates those perfect shapes that we see. So there are two very final shapes that I want to discuss really quick, and that is this, first off, this cone shape, which you think, okay, how much worse is a cone shape over a sphere? And here you can see the cap on the same sphere we're looking at uh, is 34 and a half square feet. And notice on this cone, it's the same volume. It says down here, volume 20, uh, roughly 27 cubic feet. But look at the surface area as it goes from 34 and a half to over 39 square feet. And then the last thing is the conical frustum. And this is a little closer to a more trapezoidal shape. And here you can see, again, same volume, 27 cubic feet, but the cap goes from 34 and a half square feet to 37 and a half square feet. And so you can see this spherical shape is close to the spherical shape, this hemisphere shape that you can get the better. So ultimately, this just shows the more corners that you get, the more surface area you're going to get, the less efficient it's going to be. And on a final note here, these uh, calculators that I use to find these volumes and surface area and so forth, you can find these calculators all over the internet and you can play with these numbers yourself. So there you go. I hope that wasn't too long an explanation of the geometric shape of your compost pile. We are, of course, as I mentioned I'm throughout this video, I'm sure talking about the home composter and the small composter. The commercial composters have a whole different uh, set of rules. But, yeah, notice it's as close to a spherical shape as possible. That one's a little bit more conical, but we can still take the measurements and figure out that that one is a little bit smaller than this one. So there you go. Hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to Bowtie Life, please do so. We talk mostly about gardening, sometimes about life. If you've already subscribed and you're still watching, I thank you so much for watching these videos. And I uh, would appreciate it if you found this entertaining, educational, or informational. Please click the thumbs up and share on your social media with friends who might uh, be interested in having some kind of a fast compost and how it works. Appreciate everyone of you. Have a blessed day.